All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Officer Mike Wong. I'm an officer with the Mendota Police Department. And this is Officer Daniel Hernandez, and he volunteered today. So a big round of applause for Officer Hernandez today. Thank you. Because I always have to have somebody to uh, assist me with, with my canine demos, and he was so gracious to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little um, history of my canine, canine agar here at the Mendota Police Department, a little history of where he came from, what he does for our department, and then a couple of the things that agar does here at the department is find drugs and apprehend people, and that's where my friend uh, Officer Hernandez comes into play. So anyhow, I've been an officer here at the police department for a long, long, long time. And about seven years ago, I was asked if I'd like to be a canine officer here at the police department. I said, absolutely, I would love to. So I got the job to be a canine handler. And I was teamed up with a canine partner, a four-legged hairy friend of mine. His name is Agar. And his badge number here at the Mendota Police Department, just like I have a badge number, he has a badge number too, and it's number 140. So about nine years ago, or I'm sorry, he's nine years old and he came from Czech, so about 60% of his commands are in Czech and the rest are in English, plain English. The main ones that we use are in Czech and simple ones that I tell them are in English. So if you hear me say something along the lines of Hadne, that means a good boy in Czech. Sometimes I tell him good boy, but most of the time it's in Czech if I'm working him. If we're at home, it's usually just good boy. But anyhow, Agar came to the police department as a member of the Mendota Police Department seven years ago. And Agar is trained in narcotics work, tracking, apprehensions, handler protections, building searches, and there's one more that I'm missing and I can't think of it right off the top of my head. But Agar is very, very very known in this area from other law enforcement agencies is a very good tracking dog. If I have a an elderly person wander away from a nursing home, a child that, they, that wanders into a field or wanders away from a house, uh, Agar can track that subject, track that person, or unfortunately if it's a, a criminal, uh, a burglary to a house, a business, um, person leaves on foot, um, Agar can track that person also. When we train, when he tracks, in case if he is tracking a, uh, not a criminal, if he's tracking a little boy or little girl or an elderly person, Agar is rewarded with a ball on a rope. So at the end of a track, when it's successful, he gets a ball on a rope so he's not thinking that there's an apprehension at the end of a track. Now, will he apprehend if I give him the command to do it? Absolutely, he would. But I don't want him apprehending a small little child or an elderly person that he finds. So, those are some of the things that, that he does here at the department. Um, when I first got Canine Agar, I had to raise money through various wonderful organizations here in the city of Mendota that were very generous to give to the police department to purchase Agar. He was $13,500 for a fully trained police dog, which is on the higher end or higher end of the scale, but he was totally fully trained and he was two years old. So Agar at one, he, he, like I said, he was over in check until the age of one. Then he went over in Iowa and was trained for a whole year over in Iowa by a canine trainer over there by the name of Paul Samuelson. And that's the vendor that we use, Peru uses, and several other law enforcement agencies around here use for their, for their purchase of their canines. They are a little bit on the higher end, but that's also, he doesn't train very many dogs, so they're very well trained when they come out. So we kind of like that aspect of it, and that's who we decide to go with. Um, we're very fortunate here at the police department that our vet clinic here on 13th, An 13th Avenue Animal Companion Center actually gives the city a reduced rate, and that's who takes care of Agar's care. 
is that animal companion center. So they, with a community our size, it's really important that we have people that are willing to help out um, for the cost of some of that stuff. So there's a lot of different uh, pieces of this that kind of have to coincide with each other for it to be successful. Um, I'm not going to talk too long because I'm going to get the dog out. There's some drugs hidden on one of our squad, our unmarked squad cars. And Agar is what you call a sit and stare dog. He's a passive alert sit and stare dog. So he, he'll go, he'll take his nose. When he goes into order, odor, you can see his feet, his back feet get a little happy. And his tail will start to wag slightly. And then as soon as he gets to where he can get his nose, as close to that odor, which is the strongest part of the odor, when he works the seams of the car, his rear end will come down and it'll touch the ground. And why does he do the whole thing? A reward for a tennis ball? That's his whole reason of what drives him to find drugs. Now granted, a live traffic stop out on, in, on the side of the road, the highway, a city road, or a Route 39, I'm not gonna reward him with a tennis ball because that could bounce out in traffic. Here or when we're training, he gets a tennis ball. So you'll see you'll see him when he lowers his rear end to the ground and he gets rewarded with a tennis ball and he doesn't necessarily like to give it back because he worked hard to get it and sometimes he likes to be a little stubborn every once in a while. So then you'll get to see him do that and then you're gonna see Officer Hernandez, bless his heart, <laughs> put on a bite sleeve Gonna, we're going to do two apprehensions with him also, okay? And I can... In the state of Illinois, I, have, I had to be four weeks, 40 to 60 hours a week for four weeks until I was state certified to be trained. Good question. So I'll get him out, we'll walk the car real quick, and then I'll have you put on the seat. You guys ready? Yeah.
When you think of a dog biting somebody, you'll think of somebody a dog like mauling you. If you noticed, he bit, he grabbed a hold, and he pulls down. That's how they apprehend somebody. Until we get there, give them the command to come off, and then we just cuff the person up. So he, he's not trained to, to maul or to keep biting. He bites, holds, and pulls down. A little bit of a difference. Um, one of my main jobs as a canine handler is to be his best cheerleader ever. So I have to make things like training fun for him and I have to reward him and be happy and excited. And uh, when you're tired after a day of working, sometimes it's not the easiest thing in the world. But in order for him to perform well, I have to be like that. That's just the way that it works. Now, when he walked the car for the drugs, I don't know if we've done this so many times now that he knows he's going to get to apprehend somebody and that's a lot more fun for him than walking that car. I have no idea. It's the corn dog. But uh, I would love to be able to get him out and do it again, but um, I'm going to try it. I might be an idiot. <laughs> earlier today nobody around he was fine but anyhow like I said I think we've done it enough he knows he's gonna get an apprehension so I think walking a car may not be what he wants to do right now for some reason and it was the same as last year yes Agar lives at home with uh, my wife and I and the family when he's at home he's on code green he's like lackadaisical like I am the minute I take him and put him in the back of that car he owns the car and he'll let you know he doesn't like you coming anywhere near his car and he doesn't like anybody. Um, when I go on vacation, with my wife and I and kids go on vacation, I have three people that can watch him. 
He's never been in a kennel somewhere else. I've had him ever since I've had him for the last seven years. And those three guys take care of him and he stays at home. So whenever I go to retire or when he retires, um, he gets to stay with the only family that he knows and that's me and my wife and the kids. So that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Once he retires, I will, yes. I'll be on the other side. I will. So. I'm sorry? There's no particular age. His his hips are starting to get a little a little weaker in the back end a little bit. When he sits, he's got to be a little gentle with his left back hip. But overall, he's in pretty good pretty good health. But he's he's nine. He's nine years old. <laughs> no, I just get to take care of him. I can eat. We're actually done, but I, you, I'll stick around if anybody has questions, you can ask me.